on behalf of the University of North Florida, we welcome you to our virtual candlelight vigil for racial justice. I'm Kalila Jamal, Interfaith Center Specialist within the Department of Diversity Initiatives. Tonight, we will honor, mourn, and advocate for the unjust deaths of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and the many others we have lost. To be the change we want to see at our institution and beyond. But first, I have to tell you, I am tired. And if you are joining me tonight, it is because you are tired as well of the structures of systemic racism and police brutality that robs this world of Black lives. And although we have come together tonight to honor those we can name, this message has to acknowledge the reality of all the names we will never know. The pain and suffering in my community does not start with a hashtag or a recording. It starts with the silence and complacency from our neighbors at home. If we want things to change, the work ahead has to be different. It will require a level of commitment and challenge and willingness to make mistakes, then atone for those mistakes. Because tonight we grieve the conversations black parents have to have with their children. We grieve for black siblings who pray they make it home in time because it's getting dark. We grieve with black coworkers who weigh their options daily about whether to stand up for themselves in fear of being judged, misunderstood, or worse. We grieve all the ways we fail to speak up before it's too late. Tonight, we need to fully say and mean Black Lives Matter. In the first section of our program, you will hear from students, faculty, and staff reflecting on the impact of these times. Then you will hear directly from UNF organizations and we'll conclude with a message from our university president, David Szymanski. Please join alongside us by grabbing three candles, which we will light throughout the program. It is now my pleasure to introduce Angela Lee, who will lead us in song. Mm -hmm. People get ready, for there's a train a coming. You don't need no baggage, you just get on board. All you need is faith to hear the diesels humming. You don't need no ticket, you just thank the Lord. Get on board. Get on board, my people get ready for the train to Jordan. Picking up passengers from coast to coast. Faith is the key, open the doors and bore them. There's hope for us all among those love the most. Get on board, get on board, get on board, get on board. So people get ready, there's a train a coming. You don't need no baggage, you just get on board. All you need is faith to hear the diesels humming you don't need no ticket you just thank the lord all you need is faith to hear the diesels humming you don't need no ticket you just thank the lord Good evening. My name is Janelle Berry. I'm the Black Student Union President at the University of North Florida from the Department of Diversity Initiatives. 
To the University of North Florida students, administration, alumni, and greater community. For over 400 years, Black people have endured countless acts of injustice on the basis of our skin color. We have been enslaved, economically disenfranchised, mass incarcerated, redlined, and had our own civil rights constantly suppressed. With centuries of collective political actions and individual resistance behind us, one would assume drastic change in the conditions of our survival. Yet here we are again, addressing more instances of police brutality and systematic racism on the Black lives. Unfortunately, an excessive force led to the murder of George Floyd, lack of protocol led to the murder of Breonna Taylor, white fear led to the murder of Ahmaud Arbery, and mental health issues led to the murder of Troy McDade and Manuel Ellis. These horrific events sparked a worldwide call for justice, not only for those listed here, but also for those who of the Black lives we have lost along the way. Now more than ever is a time for everyone to use their voice to speak out against racial injustice, including overt and convert behaviors, plaguing our Black community around the globe. We stand in solidarity with the Black kin on the front lines and non-Black POC white allies who say enough is enough. It is crucial to remember Black people are an integral piece of the puzzle. That is the United States. Our ancestors sweat and tears, nourish the soil the country was built upon. Our ancestors' blood was shed in the fight against racism, racism and injustice. We honor their sacrifice as we remember their fighting spirit lives in us. It is our duty to honor their work as we carry on with our lives. This fight, which began before the inception of the United States, must end with our generation. We must ensure future generations will not have to write letters like this one. We must rebuke the fear of untimely death because of our skin color. As an organization that was founded on Black excellence and prioritizes the advancement of our community, we call upon members of the broader community to join us in the struggle. In conclusion, the University of North Florida's Black Student Union sends our sympathies and deepest condolences to the family and friends of the Black people slain because of institutionalized racism. We will continue the necessary work to ensure justice is served. We would like to thank you all for your bravery and vulnerability during this time. Unity has been our strength and will continue to be our strength. Let us remember this does not end, the fight does not end when the announcement of the court conviction or sentence, it does not end when the names of the dead stop trending, and it also does not end when the marches and other actions are less frequent. We encourage you all to continue to hold yourselves, each other, and our elected officials accountable to the ideal of democracy, equity, and freedom. We ask that you join us in channeling your anger, confusion, and frustration and pain into productive and tangible actions. Thank you. Good evening. I'm State Representative Tracy Davis and also alum of the Osprey family. And I'm so glad to be here with you tonight. This year has been unbearable. Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and George Floyd. Let's not forget so many others that have fallen victim to the hatred and violence that plagued this country for years. There is so much that others can't take for granted that we as black people cannot do. You can't seek help after a car accident while black. You can't listen to music in a parking lot while black. You can't wear a hoodie while black. You can't be a 13 year old boy while black. You can't enter your own home while black. You can't be a six-year-old and throw a tantrum tantrum while Black. You can't sit in your own apartment while Black. The message is loud and clear. You simply cannot live in America while Black. How can we build a future that allows us to simply live while Black? Black, white, brown, and everything in between, it is my belief that no matter who you are, your life has meaning, and each of us Every action, every choice, every word has an effect that creates a ripple in society's collective ocean. It all matters. 
Today, I'd like to share with you the meaning that these Black lives have brought to us. Through our struggles, we've learned how much strength we have to endure to keep moving, not to let all the pain and trauma stop what must be done in order to build a brighter tomorrow. Through our calls for justice, speaking truth to power, we've learned together our voices were heard all over the globe, from New Zealand to Berlin. Your generation has inspired people of every background that this movement is worth joining and being a part of. Through our collective action, whether it be marching through our communities, signing petitions, or having those tough conversations with our family, friends, and colleagues, we are, the, we are at the height of dismantling a destructive system and rebuilding one that works for everyone. I urge you, keep going. When it all seems to be falling apart around you, that means it's working. Your job is to push harder. Someday, we'll be able to say that all lives matter and it will be 100% true. But first, let's show the world that Black lives matter. Let's not let this loss be in vain. And you must remember through everything, you, each of you have the power to make the change you want to see. You must vote. Thank you, Representative Davis, for joining us tonight. I now invite everyone to join me in lighting the first candle for George Floyd, who never got the opportunity to meet his three-year-old granddaughter. Hello, my name is Taj Johnson, member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. And I just wanted to give a piece of how I feel about the situation. When I was a child, my mother was softly seeing, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Although I didn't quite understand why that softly sung hymn and its clear message of universal worth stuck with me, it affirmed that regardless of outward characteristics, all were valuable and deserving of respect. As I grew older and more aware of the prejudice and racial discord in the world, the words of that hymn dared me. It challenged me to live a life that embodied the words of that hymn that moved me so many years ago. To discount the differences of our outward appearances and to choose to focus on the internal elements that we all share as human beings. To speak the truth of all lives matter but also that black lives matter too. To ensure that we are no longer consumed with the hatred or sadness of the horrific wrongs done to us and by us, but filled with the peace of equality and the joy of a new day and new possibilities. To hold steadfast to the happiness within that reminds us that there is no other color of blood but red and there is neither black nor white. Therefore, we must continue to love one another as we are all striving for the same American dream. In this moment, I want to remind ourselves, we are all brothers and sisters and our lives are inextricably linked and our destinies are unfolding one day at a time, painting a portrait filled with the brightness of our hopes and dreams and the darkness of our pain and disappointments. Let's work together to make that painting as bright as it can be. Let's minimize the pains and slights that often plague our day-to-day -day interactions. 
Let's fill each other with light and celebrate and invest in each other's dream. Let's usher in a brighter day. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Dr. Chris Johnson, the Associate Dean in the Coggin College of Business and Professor of Economics at the University of North Florida. In 1926, Langston Hughes wrote a poem that appeared in print that read, I too sing America. I am the darker brother. They send me to eat in the kitchen when company come, but I laugh and I eat well and I grow strong. Tomorrow, I'll be at the table when company comes. Nobody will dare say to me, eat in the kitchen then. Besides, they'll see how beautiful I am and be ashamed. I too am America. This evening, my heart aches knowing that nearly a century after Hughes wrote this poem, the darker brothers and sisters of this nation are still being told to go to the kitchen and eat and not afforded a seat at the table of equality. My heart aches knowing that tomorrow for which Langston Hughes long is a tomorrow that has not yet dawned. My heart aches knowing that the fears of police brutality that hung over the heads of my grandfathers of yesteryear are the same fears that hang over the heads of my sons today. My heart aches as I think about George Floyd crying out, I can't breathe, and realizing that I may be only one traffic stop away from experiencing that same fate. My heart aches tonight, but I still have hope. My hope is that the protests that I'm seeing across the nation and across the world, protest groups that transcend racial and ethnic lines, transcend socioeconomic status, transcend generational boundaries. My hope is that these protests and these protesters will continue to push for a table of equality for all. My hope is that the energy of this moment will become the fuel that drives meaningful and lasting change. My hope is that when the marching stops in the streets, the movement will continue to change our policies and practices. My hope is that the symbolic gestures of today will become the systemic change that is needed to address the economic, social, health, educational, political, and other institutional structures that have fueled centuries of injustice. My hope is that tomorrow, we will all be able to sit down together at the table of human fellowship, where no one is sent to the kitchen to eat, but where all can experience justice, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And now I invite everyone to join me in lighting the second candle for Brianna Taylor who would have been just 27 last week. Her friends were in the middle of planning her birthday celebrations. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Sarah Lachance Adams. I'm the director of the Florida Blue Center for Ethics and I'm a professor of philosophy. I'm absolutely honored and humbled to be here tonight. And I was hesitant to speak. I felt that as a white person, maybe it wasn't my place to speak tonight. But on the other hand, I thought that maybe I should share the reason for my hesitation. I feel like now is the time for those of us in the white community at UNF to maybe realize that our black, brown, and native members of the community have been living a really different reality from the one that we have. 
And we need to start listening better and understanding that the world as they experience it has been very different from the world as we've been experiencing it. And I think that you've all heard from them tonight and will continue to hear about what a different world it is to step outside of your home and to feel threatened in the ways that they've described. And so my message is primarily for the white community of UNF. The time has come to stop trying to lead and start following. To find black, brown and native members of the community to follow. To listen and stop speaking so much. To ask how you can serve. That's what we need to start doing now. You don't have to be on the front lines. If you can be on the front lines, do it. If you're less likely to be arrested because you're white, stand in front of a black, brown, or native person who's more likely to be arrested or shot or tased. That's the role that we can play now. You can pay bail money. You can donate medical items. You can feed people who are out there protesting. You can educate other white people. You cannot let things slide anymore, like you know you have, like we all have. There's a special role that we can play. Today for inspiration, I watched James Baldwin's um, debate with William F. Buckley in 1965. And one of the things that he said was that when he was somewhere between five and seven years old, that he realized that the flag that he pledged allegiance to did not pledge allegiance to him. And I think we should all pledge allegiance to the black community. So that's my message to the white community of UNF. Let's pledge our allegiance to the black community. Let's ask them what they need and let's just give it to them. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Can y'all hear me? Yes, okay, cool. Um, I'm Alexandria, I'm sorry about that. Um, I can't really see my face on here, but um, I'm Alexandria, I am a student here at UNF. And um, I don't know, I just want to talk about black lives and the meaning of black lives and how important Black lives are. And um, I don't really think that we talk about the importance of Black lives, really. And we don't talk about what Black lives mean and how much value Black lives have. And it wasn't really until recently that we started talking about the value that Black lives have. And it makes me sad. Like, I don't want to cry on camera, but it does. It makes me sad because I just can't believe that it's taken this long and it's taken this much pain and it's taken this much hatred and it's taken this much everything for us to finally be like, hey, maybe Black lives really do matter. Maybe they have some type of value to them. And I think that Black people having to die and like literally black people having to die for everybody else to be like, hmm, maybe black lives do have matter. It just makes me sad. Like there's no other words really for it other than the fact that it just makes me sad. Um, I really do hope for a better tomorrow. I see constantly on the front lines that there is a lot of people that are out there and they are protesting and they're like, I'm gonna fight for you, my black brother, my black sister. I'm going to put my body on this line. Put your money where your mouth is and do it. Please protect black people, P protect black women, protect black um, men, protect black children 
please do, because that's what we need at this moment. We need you to protect us from everything that's going on because we have fought this battle for so long. And if we have to continue doing it by ourselves, then it really shows that you do not mean that our lives matter. Thank you. Uh, I'm Dr. Jermaine Marshall, and I'm an alumnus of UNF. In 1964, Fannie Lou Hamer declared, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. As a Black American, that is how I feel. After 400 years of dehumanization of Blacks in this country, Racism is still a chronic disease that pervades the very fabric of American society. After 400 years, it is sickening to feel like having black skin is a crime and therefore consider it a clear and present danger to bring a black child into this world. As a pastor, it grieves my heart that racism in this country is being perpetuated, aided and abetted through spiritual wickedness in high places and religious hypocrisy. One thing every religion has in common is the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And yet today, the leader of the free world is attempting to re-legitimize the Confederacy and American pride and America prides itself on being a Christian nation despite its many injustices against people of color. Malcolm X once said, you're not to be so blind with patriotism that you can't face reality. Wrong is wrong, no matter who does it or says it. James Cone once said, if we cannot recognize the truth, then it cannot liberate us from untruth. I hope that the surrealism of this country attempting to face its demons results in the eradication of America's original sin, a white supremacy, which is the cause of racism. I hope that people seeking racial reconciliation do not expect cheap grace from black people because what has cost us much cannot be cheap for them. I hope people realize that there can be no racial reconciliation without repentance and reparations. And I hope Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream deferred finally becomes a dream realized. Lastly, please join me in lighting a third candle for Ahmad Arbery, who just wanted to run. And may this candle burn for Tony McDay, Jamie Johnson, and the many others on our hearts tonight, both named and unnamed, known and unknown. Next, a moment of reflection from Matt Hartley, Associate Director of the Interfaith Center. Good evening. As we enter this moment of reflection together, I invite you to close your eyes and to take a deep breath in through your nose and to breathe it out through your mouth. And again, in through your nose and out through your mouth. And I invite you for a moment in silence to breathe. Your breath has absolute worth. In religious traditions, we might say that your breath is sacred. George Floyd's breath was sacred. Maude Arbery and Breonna Taylor's breath was sacred. 
Tony McDade and Jamie Johnson, many others, too many others. Their breath is sacred. And so now we will pause for an eight minute and 46 second moment of silence. You may know that this is the length of time that the officer maliciously stood, on, kneeled on George Floyd's neck, killing him. We'll take this moment of silence to honor the lives that were taken, but also the lives that were lived, the preciousness of their breath. So in this time, we'll breathe for them. I invite you to spend this time in reflection or prayer, perhaps journaling or typing some notes about your resolutions, or just sitting and grieving because our grief is real. So for eight minutes and 46 seconds, let us breathe.
Thank you to UNF School of Music student Tavian Cox for sharing that beautiful song. My name is Alma and I work within the Department of Diversity Initiatives as Interface Center staff. I am also a part of the department's Quest program for first year students. It is my pleasure to introduce the second half of our program where you are here from dep my department and others at UNF who are committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion for our community. Thank you. My name is Danielle Stokes, and I am the Intercultural Center for Peace Specialist and the Student Alliance for Inclusion and Diversity Advisor under the University of North Florida's Department of Diversity Initiatives. The Department of Diversity Initiatives strives to foster a welcoming and inclusive community for all Ospreys. We provide a space for our students to be their authentic selves and embrace their intersectional identities. Through a robust programming calendar and support services, students have the opportunity to further explore their cultural, racial, gender, and religious identities. As a department, we are committed to the advancement of diversity, equity, and inclusion. We are advocates for social justice and social change. We fight tirelessly for the marginalized populations the forgotten, the voiceless, and the unheard, but we cannot do it alone. We need your help to end all injustice. Tonight, I invite you to join us on our journey as we continue to soar above differences and embrace diversity, not just in this moment, but always. Step up, listen to learn, speak out, educate, be proactive and not reactive. Until Black Lives Matter, we cannot honestly say all lives matter. The change we so desperately need and want to see begins with me, you, our loved ones, and your neighbors. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Dewan Love Thinkings, Program Coordinator with the UNF LGBT Resource Center. Since 2006, our mission has been to provide resources, advocacy, and to give a safe space where everyone can be their authentic self regardless of their gender, self-expression, orientation, identity, race, and ethnicity. Recently, the recorded deaths and acts of violence against the Black community has angered and hurt, deeply hurt us all. It has once again spotlighted the harsh realities that many Black people, including those within the LGBTQIA plus community, face daily due to a leg legacy of discrimination, systematic racism, and unsubstantiated fear. As we celebrate LGBT Pride this month, we must remember the Black and Brown lives who were lost and injured four years ago during the Pulse shooting, the 12 transgender and non-binary lives taken this year, including the recent police-involved death of Tony McDade and the epidemic of violence and senseless murders of Black transgender women in the United States. The LGBT Resource Center and its staff remains committed to providing a safe and inclusive space for all, as well as advocating against injustice of any kind on our campus and in our community. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Ali Schneider and I'm the student body president at UNF. I'm here today to express student government's commitment and my own personal commitment to fighting and advocating for black students at UNF and making our campus a safe, welcoming and equitable place. And with that, I'd like to introduce student government's attorney general, Carlito Washington. Hello, my name is Carlito Washington. I serve as the attorney general of student government. I would like to thank the university for hosting this vigil and allowing us to gather and honor those whose lives were cut short unjustly due to careless acts in which were rooted in racial prejudices and biases. May actions continue to be taken nationally and globally as a multitude of communities unite that not only address issues such as racial injustice and police brutality, but that also work to provide concrete and substantial change that will benefit generations to come and foster a positive and equal environment for all. Within the last two weeks in the midst of protests, the city of Dallas has adopted a duty to intervene rule that requires officers to stop their colleagues who are engaging in inappropriate use of force. In addition, Minneapolis has banned the use of chokeholds. These examples of many demonstrate that action is imperative and is effective and that the lives of victims are not in vain. I would like to encourage you all to be champions of the victims of injustice and take personal action in honor of their legacies. I pray for the family and friends of the victims that tranquility will bestow upon them and the love of many communities surrounds them. May the love of God and the peace of Christ surround them. Good evening, everyone. My name is Karen Patterson and I'm the Associate Vice President for Faculty Development. And I have the honor of co-chairing the Commission on Diversity and Inclusion or Cody, as we like to call it, with Dr. Christopher Johnson, you heard from him earlier, and Alison Cruz. Cody consists of over 60 students, faculty and staff members who work towards two primary ambitions. To increase appreciation for and the awareness of the benefits, importance and relevance of diversity and inclusion, and to work collaboratively to advance the efforts of the university to be more diverse and inclusive, identifying the challenging obstacles and identifying and building assets and strengths. A few of our recent projects include the com campus climate survey conducted last fall and the introduction of the anonymous online bias incident reporting form and support of activities and initiatives that help attract underrepresented students, faculty and staff to the campus. Cody members are currently working to finish UNF's strategic plan for inclusive excellence, which will identify sustainable changes, both immediate and, immediate and long-term, and to provide the resources and supports to implement them. I invite you to join us if you have a passion for working towards making the systematic changes that we know are long overdue to improve the diversity and to make UNF truly inclusive. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Whitney Meyer and I'm the director of the Community Alliance for Student Success Program, or as what we fondly call CAS. I'm here today to say we stand with you. We dream big with you. In CAS, we are here as a department to ensure that our black students have opportunities to become successful business and community leaders. We have C-suite executives such as Darnell Smith, Madeline Scales Taylor, Andre Wallace, Nelson McCoy, Cleve Warren, and Obi Umana. These leaders understand that you can be what you can see these are leaders in their communities, leaders in their businesses who believe in you, who believe in our black students and have invested in you. 
as a department and as a community, we stand with you all the way to ensure your next steps are successful. Again, we dream with you in this time. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Dr. Wanda Lestraps and I am privileged to be here to represent the African American Faculty and Staff Association at the University of North Florida, where I am privileged to be serving as president this year. We are honored to be among the many organizations in support of Black Lives Matter and want our university community to know that we are supporting the needs of all individuals with Black ancestry, regardless of nationality, to promote, support, cultural, educational, and civic opportunities during this time of need. The silence of racial injustices has been broken. The association, remember those tonight along with you who have been silenced and are reminded that we can no longer remain silent. Our stories, our experiences are powerful testimonies against the systems that have oppressed and continue to oppress. Systems that have restricted and limited generations of black Americans. Systems that have condoned acts of violence against black Americans. Our stories must be told and they must be heard. We must speak on behalf of those who have been silenced and we must create a counter narrative that is powerful and empowering. The UNF African American Faculty Staff Association is committed to supporting UNF faculty and staff by providing spaces where your stories can be shared where they are acknowledged and valued. We will serve as a platform so that all of our stories are heard. So please join us in supporting each other and equally important in supporting our UNF students of color. Help us create structures that will sustain beyond the immediate movement, beyond this summer beyond the fall semester and beyond the next academic year. Know that we are here for you and together we can, together we will. Thank you. I am Marlon Jones, the Director of Equal Opportunity and Inclusion and the Title IX Coordinator here at the University of North Florida. I hail from the state of Virginia, where my parents graduated from Virginia State College because the University of Virginia was not open to minorities. In fact, the university was not even open to women until after I was born. In my role in equal opportunity and inclusion, I want to make sure that everyone here at UNF feels that they are a vibrant part of this community, that they feel welcomed and included. If at any point during your time with the university, you feel that you have been treated differently because of your membership in any protected group, from race to religion, from national origin to disability challenges, or to ethnic background or gender expression. Please feel free to come by my office to seek guidance and to determine if you have 
a complaint against those who have made you feel less than. Our office conducts trainings that are campus-wide in the areas of Title VII, Title IX, and diversity and inclusion. And we also help monitor the recruitment process for staff and faculty positions to make sure that all persons who are qualified can be considered for positions. In addition, as the Title IX coordinator, I oversee the investigations of any claims of discrimination on any basis, including retaliation for participating in a discrimination process. We are located in building one of the university when we are open. Please visit our website so that you can get in touch with us as we are working remotely and know that my staff will listen to you, will hear you, and will try to help you come up with solutions to any problems that you face as you matriculate as a student, as you serve the university as a contractor or vendor, or as you participate as a professor in research, education, and community activities. Hello, I am Deidre Lane and I serve as the Assistant Director for One Jacks Institute. This is a tough time in our history, our world. My reality is that like many others, I'm dealing with a vast range of emotion. My truth is I'm angry and I want change. My hope is, may all our broken hearts fuel us to fix our world. I recognize that this is a pivotal moment in all of our lives and one that will impact us for the rest of our lives. Hopefully what happens today will be the beginning of what our community will look like moving forward. Thus, this is a time to redirect our anger, our sadness, our disappointment, and even our fear to have heard conversations to unite us in solidarity. We have to come together beyond racial, gen racial gender, and religious lines and become one in the fight for an inclusive community where the difference is welcomed and celebrated. We can live different together. So such, as, such a time like this, I'm happy to be a part of One Jacks Institute. Our work celebrates diversity by encouraging people to be different together. One Jack serves as a bridge for UNF students into the larger community while at the same time, introducing Jacksonville community leaders to a wide variety of UNF students, Jacksonville will reach its highest and best potential when it fully honors every person's dignity and gives space for those persons to offer the gifts they bring to the broader community where all can live authentically different together. Good evening. My name is Brandon Jacobs. I'm the chairman of the UNF Black Alumni Association. The UNF Black Alumni Association was founded in 2016 in an effort to operate as a platform for Black and Brown alumni and students to ensure that the voices of those that often go unheard are represented boldly and loudly to ensure that the University of North Florida and its alumni association represents the entire mosaic of its student and alumni base. In light of recent events, 
As the chairman of the UNF Black Alumni Association, I recognize the need for our organization to do more to ensure we are fulfilling the entirety of our organizational responsibility to our membership. Personally, I'm angry. I've been angry about the deaths of Trayvon Martin, Eric Garner, Walter Scott, Philando Castile, and every avoidable death leading up to the recent murder of George Floyd. We as a society deserve better from those who are sworn in oath to protect and serve us. I will continue to pray for the family of George Floyd as they continue their pursuit of justice. And if there is anything to be learned from this tragedy, I hope that we as the black community remain peacefully active and engaged in an effort to change our circumstances and ensure legislation is put in place to ensure we do not continue to endure another loss like this. The Black Alumni Association encourages everyone to vote regardless of party affiliation and to do so on all levels of government. From your city council to mayors, governors, state representatives, to the president of the United States, Black Lives Matter. And I look forward to working with the UNF CAS program, the Department of Diversity Initiatives, the Black Student Union, the Alumni Association and President Zemanski to ensure that the voices of our black and brown students and alumni continue to resonate throughout the UNF family. We've only just begun. The marathon continues. We thank each of these offices for the work they have done for the UNF and Jacksonville community. And now please join me in welcoming President David Zemanski. Hi, I'm David Zemanski and the president at UNF. This is my wife, Maria. This is a tough time for us all. I'm, I'm very humbled to be here today, but I'm also very proud of all the people who we have in our community, the people who you just heard and others whose voices are silent, but are not going to be silent as we continue to work hard to change our current environment and, and really the attitudes that people have. Question might be raised, what is your heartbreak and what is your hope? My heartbreak is, is when I see people hurt and then I see people hurting. It really truly breaks my heart. And you see the senseless killings, many of the people who we've named and others, George and Ahmad and Brianna, it really is devastating to us all. And black lives truly matter. And black lives have been marginalized from a lot of people for over a long period of time. And we're not tolerant of that. I'm not, UNF is not tolerant of racism. It doesn't support it in any form or fashion. We denounce racism. We understand and we perpetuate and we wanna make sure everybody knows that black lives matter. And we're gonna to try to make that difference. We're gonna to try to make that difference so it's better for the next generation and the generation after that, but also making sure that it's better today for the people who are here with us today. What is your hope? My hope is that we won't see racism anymore, that we'll eliminate it, that we'll fight it. We'll fight the social injustice that exists. We'll create a society where everybody has an equal opportunity to be successful, where people of color can rise to the top easily and not feel the pain that you hear today and the pain that you hear from others. We want to create that society that truly is just. We won't do it by ourselves, but we'll do it through everybody cooperating and everybody realizing and everybody having a voice and nobody remaining silent. We're going to make it a better world. I feel that obligation and I hold that obligation every day. Every day I wake up trying to figure out how we're going to make UNF better, how we're going to create more opportunities for more people to be successful. And today we're going to make a commitment to abolishing racism as best as we can and taking the first steps. We're going to make anti-racism education mandatory for all incoming freshmen, for all transfer students. And we intend to do it for all our students. We'll also make it an integral part of the first day experience for all new faculty and all new staff so people understand who we are and what we stand for as an institution and in our society. We're also going to create the very first position that's a vice president of diversity and, in, and inclusion at the University of North Florida. Whitney Meyer, who you heard from earlier, is going to be our first chief diversity officer at the VP level. This person will report directly to me. It's about bringing people together. You've heard all the great organizations that we have. It's about bringing them together and making a difference. 
and figuring out what that next step is. It begins with dialogue. It begins with the dialogue we have today, which is really important to us to begin to understand and be sensitive to people's feelings and what's going on and what are also some of the solutions. Importantly, if you know me, it's not just about dialogue, it's about taking action steps. And so the action steps that we were talking about today are the first two steps that we're taking, but there's many more steps that we'll take as we learn more and as collectively we generate the ideas to be uniquely UNF and to truly be leaders where every black student is going to be successful and every black student is gonna have the opportunity to be successful and, and really grow as an individual and make it for a better society because of being here at UNF. Our Osprey family is a special family. Together, we're gonna to make a difference. We're gonna begin that journey. We're gonna begin that journey this moment. And tomorrow we will be a different institution. We'll be a different society. And it'll be because of Ospreys like the people here today who are gathered to make a difference. Thank you very much. We will need your support. Thank you. Thank you for those remarks, President Szymanski. Let's be better for those who have done this work. Let us lean in to our ability to stand beside each other. Let those of us with privilege learn to listen and take action. If history has taught me anything, it's that nothing can be done without collective action and to dismantle the toxic systems embedded in this country, we will need you here for the long haul. As we conclude tonight, we must courageously move towards a new day because the change we seek is not impossible, even if you've come here tonight feeling like it was. If you've marched, shouted, donated, advocated, shared, thank you for being here. This is just the beginning. To end our program, I invite you one last time to grab your candles and to breathe with me, to breathe deeply for the lives we have lost, to breathe for the changes we will make in the work ahead for Black Lives Matter to be more than just a slogan, to breathe together with everyone you see on the screen in front of you, to breathe with the UNF community and beyond. Thank you. The work had just begun and good night.